Yesner here with another uh, video for you all. And uh, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But before I get there, super, super excited that today marks the launch of my second book, Become Debt Free in Less Than One Hour. Uh, so my second book has officially launched. You can get it for free by going to seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. So again, seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. And uh, the book title is exactly what it sounds like. What can you do to become debt free? Uh, it's, it's a very relatively short book, but I put a whole bunch of tips and tricks and strategies in there where you can earn some extra income, you can decrease some of your expenses, all kinds of, of tips and tricks and some of the stuff the banks may not want you to know, but negotiation tactics. Uh, what, but what can you do to become debt free in less than an hour? Uh, not that by reading the book in one hour you will be debt free, but all the things in the book can be implemented in less than one hour. And so again, if you go to seanmyesner.com slash become debt free, you can get your free copy of the book. I am going to put it up on Amazon. I'm going to put it up on Amazon and force you to buy it if you go to Amazon. So if you go to seanmyesner.com slash become debt free, you can get the book for free. So uh, I wanted to continue my thought process here. Uh, a couple days ago, I talked about what does it mean to you to be debt free? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? What can you accomplish when you're debt free? The next day I talked about how much debt is normal. So, you know, maybe most of us have debt and how much of that debt is normal. Is there a, an amount? Is there a percentage? Is there uh, different types of debt? Then the next day I talked about how to change your money mindset. And so if you have a, a negative mindset about money, how do you change that to a positive mindset? Yesterday's video was all about how to break those bad habits. So not necessarily changing your mindset, but breaking some of the bad habits that you have and then changing your mindset from there. Today, what I wanted to talk about was good habits and bad habits. And so what are good money habits and what are bad money habits? What I'd love for you to do is drop a comment and let me know what you think are good uh, and bad money habits. You know, what are some good ones that you have? Maybe what are some bad ones that you have? Drop a comment, let me know. Uh, would really appreciate it. But let me run through the list here. And they're not all bad or the opposite of good. There are some different uh, concepts on both of these lists. So some good money habits. Avoid spending money you don't have. Now, I think what this means is one of two things. Either if you're going to charge something, make sure that you have enough money to pay that charge card at the end of the month. Don't charge something that you cannot fully pay off. Or uh, the second type of meaning is don't buy something, um, don't spend more than what you make. So if you bring in five grand a month, don't spend six grand a month. Don't spend 5,500 a month. Don't spend 5,001 a month. In fact, I would say if you bring in 5,000 and you can spend 4,999 and save that last dollar, you're probably further ahead than a lot of other people uh, that are out there today struggling uh, with money. So avoid spending money you don't have. Another concept is avoid spending money unnecessarily. Now, I think there's a difference here between rewarding yourself and spending money on yourself versus spending money unnecessarily. Uh, so what do I mean? Spending money unnecessarily. Maybe you don't need to go to the premium steakhouse. You can go to uh, Chili's or Applebee's or Outback. You don't need to go to the most expensive. Uh, maybe you go to the grocery store and you use coupons. Maybe it's something that you don't necessarily need and so you don't buy. Now, I think that's totally different than rewarding yourself. So, for example, I said today was the launch of the book. Uh, the book is free for those of you that go to the website, the seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. The book is free, but then there's a, a handful of upsells, including a workbook to go with the book, including some videos that I put together, uh, some other things. So th there is an upsell uh, if you're interested in looking at that kind of stuff when those upsell numbers hit a certain dollar level, I'm going to reward myself. I think that's a good habit to get into is rewarding yourself for accomplishing a goal versus 
spending money unnecessarily on stuff that you don't necessarily need. I do think there's a difference there. Let me know if I'm making sense uh, to you about that topic. You know, let me know in the comments if, if you're understanding what I'm saying about that. Uh, another great money habit is to comparison shop. I really don't think there's anything wrong in comparison shopping on big purchases. I don't know that you necessarily want to comparison shop on a you know five dollar item or a three dollar item. Now some people do, and that's totally cool. You know some people will uh, skip one gas station and go to another because the gas is twenty cents cheaper, thirty cents cheaper. I try to go to Costco for gas as much as I can because it's cheaper than going to one of the gas stations on the corner. Now I think that's okay if I don't have to drive another 10 miles to get to the cheaper price because then I'm using gas unnecessarily when I could have saved, you know, even though I would have spent a few cents more, uh, I would have filled up earlier, I wouldn't have wasted the gas. Uh, people haggle with me all the time and, and <laughs> I will tell you I don't necessarily like it but it's a fact of life and so people ask me all the time, you know, the comparison price against other attorneys when they need to use my services. So you know, comparison shop. Make sure you're getting uh, the best deal uh, for what you're buying. Skip the impulse buys. Now, the people at the stores and the grocery stores know that the magazines and the whatnot that they put uh, right up front by the cashier, they know that that's going to be the most enticing thing and it's intentionally there to be an impulse buy. Don't buy it. Don't buy that stuff. You know, do you really need that soda? Do you really need that bottle of water? Do you really need that bag of chips? Do you really need that magazine as you're leaving uh, the, the grocery store? Stop with the impulse buys and you'll save a whole bunch of money. Another good habit, never pay full price. Now again, I'm not talking about two and three and four dollar items, even maybe ten and fifteen dollar items. It's not like you can walk into a grocery store and say, well I know the price of all these groceries is a hundred bucks, would you take eighty? That's not what I'm talking about, but you know, full price. So cars, houses, uh, big purchases. I don't think there's anything wrong uh, in connection with comparison shopping. Check the internet, see what it, what the price for this particular item is on the internet. If you're looking at buying a, let's say, an expensive TV or piece of electronic equipment, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, is there any better deal? Is this the best price? You know, something like that. Uh, certainly at the grocery store, one way you can avoid paying full price is couponing. Um, but again, I wouldn't suggest haggling at the grocery store. But, you know, again, a good money habit to get into. Never pay full price. Always pay uh, what you feel is affordable to pay that, that is not insulting uh, to the seller. I think another good money habit is to dream big. Uh, big goals. Big things. Uh, you know, dream big. I was talking to a friend of mine today saying, you know, I hope that I get, you know, five additional upsells from the book or, or 10 or 15 or 20 or 25. And he said to me, why, why so low? Why not try to say, I think I can get 5,000 sales. I think I can get 10,000 sales. You know, why so low? Dream big, you know, shoot for the moon and you'll at least hit the stars. So, uh, I think another great money habit, big dreams, big goals, big visions, uh, big uh, abundance, and I think that's another great money habit to get into. Another good money habit, find opportunities. There are opportunities all around you. You just got to be open to finding them. So clear your mind of all the clutter, uh, get a positive mindset, and look for all the opportunities that are around you. You'll be surprised what you find. You know, it's interesting, this whole concept of money mindset uh, really came out of one thing that I had created to go along with the sale of or the, the giveaway of become debt free. I thought one thing on mindset and that one thing turned into two and then three and then four and then five. So when you get the, the book, the become debt free book, you get sent to another page that asks you for an upsell that's all things about money mindset. It's incredible the opportunities that are around us all day every day. Uh, I've said this one before, this next one before a lot, uh, surround yourself with positive people and I think that's really important. Uh, when you surround yourself with negative people you're going to drag yourself down. When you surround yourself with positive people you're going to be more uh, abundant 
just by definition because you're around all these positive people. And so even as a good money habit, surround yourself with positive people uh, and keep your mindset straight. And I think that's a great money habit to get into. Another thing I wrote down here in terms of good money habits, learn. Uh, I have uh, friends of mine that you know learn more to earn more. Uh, I'm always reading, I'm always listening to podcasts, I'm always uh, consuming content on the internet, good educational content on the internet. Now again, every once in a while I give myself a break, uh, which I'll talk about in terms of bad money habits, uh, but learn. Learn as much as you can. Consume. There's free content out there. There's paid content out there. Consume and learn as much as you can, especially if you're interested in money mindset, read things about money mindset, read things about money, read things about psychology, read things about money, and you'll get better money habits because of that. Uh, the, the next one I have here on the list is patience. Be patient. Um, there's no reason to rush. This isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. So you know, those of you that have dug yourselves into debt, you're not going to get out of debt in a day uh, unless maybe you hit the lottery. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a journey. So be patient and enjoy the journey. Uh, the last thing I have here in terms of good money habits is to give and give back. Give back to the community. If you're going to ask somebody for something, give them something back in return or just give them something with no expectation of them giving you anything back in return. When was the last time you bought a stranger a cup of coffee? When was the last time you donated to your favorite charity? I think these are some of the things that I said yesterday uh, in terms of breaking bad money habits is to give. But give without the expectation of getting anything back in return and that will open you up to some of these positive good money mindsets. So talked a lot about good money mindsets uh, like I said, the bad money mindsets can be summarized as the opposite of all that other stuff I just said. But I want to go into some of them in a little bit more detail just so that you're aware. If you see yourself doing some of this stuff, uh, you're more aware and you can stop doing it. So again, spending more than you make. If you make $5,000 a month, don't spend $5,500. do not spend $6,000. do not spend $5,001. Don't spend more than what you make. Spend less than what you make. Don't spend on things you don't need. That's the opposite of, of spending, you know, avoiding to spend money unnecessarily, avoiding spending money you don't have. Avoid spending on things you don't need, necessities. Now, again, if you accomplish some big goal, I want you to reward yourself. I think that is a good money habit to get into, rewarding yourself for accomplishing a goal. But just because something's there. I mean, it's the classic salesman approach. You know, if you if you don't buy today, you're going to miss out on it forever. Okay, well, if I miss out on it forever, then it wasn't meant to be. So don't spend on things that you don't need. Don't buy on impulse. Avoid buying on impulse. You know, the, the things in the racks at the grocery store. Uh, you know, you get some new thing and you run out and you buy something to go with it. You know, avoid buying on impulse. That's a bad, uh, buying on impulse is a bad money habit. Uh, paying full price. You know, again, I talked about never pay full price as a good money habit. And so paying full price is a bad money habit in certain circumstances. Again, I'm not going to haggle at the grocery store. I'm not going to haggle at Lowe's or Home Depot or Costco. I'm not going to haggle, you know, with a lot of these places. But the places that I can haggle, yeah, I'm going to haggle a little bit and I'm going to see if I can get that full price down. So don't just accept full price uh, in all cases. Complaining about obstacles. So another bad habit, one that kind of drives me nuts, is complaining about obstacles. Now, I think this is the opposite of finding opportunities because as you find these opportunities, obstacles are going to come up. I mean, Lord knows my funnel should have been launched a week and a half ago, become debt free should have been launched a week and a half ago, but I had a couple of stumbling blocks in terms of getting the internet uh, pages correct and, and getting some of the merchant services accounts hooked up and some of that stuff. And so I could have complained about all that stuff or I just addressed it. And so, okay, so the book launched, uh, you know, a week and a half, two weeks later than I wanted it to. So what? It's still launched. So avoid complaining about the obstacles and just resolve the obstacles. You know, the fact that the book launched two weeks late you know, maybe I missed out on two weeks of income on some of those upsells. But again, 
the, the launch of the book isn't going to necessarily make me a ton of money. It's the marketing of the book and it's the, you know, buying the ads on, on social media and doing that kind of stuff that's really going to uh, sell the book or, or give away the book and sell the, the upsells. It's not the fact that I launched two weeks late isn't going to uh, do anything. And, and, you know, that old proverb that says, uh, when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago? When's the second best time today? So I should have launched two weeks ago. Oh, well, I still launched today. I didn't complain about the obstacles. I just resolved them and launched. Uh, the next bad habit I have here is to play on social media. Now play on social media. I am trying intentionally to be everywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I am trying intentionally to be everywhere on social media, but I'm not playing. I'm going into groups and doing what I can to add value. I'm recording content for you all. I'm promoting the launch of Become Debt Free. Uh, I'm not playing. I'm not going to negative groups on, on social media and interacting with those groups. Heck, I got a call today about a very negative group here in my community and I'm not a member and my life is fantastic because of it. So. Don't play on social media, use social media. You know, the fact that we've got the uh, COVID and the coronavirus and the election and politics, and there's, there's no reason to get into all that nonsense on social media. You may be really passionate about it and you're entitled to be passionate about it. And if you wanna post on social media, by all means, post on social media. You probably won't find any political or COVID posts by me on social media. If you do, they are few and far between, and if you do, they are satire so that I can have a laugh uh, one way or the other. So don't play on social media, but use social media. Another bad habit is not tracking your expenses. So, you know, I said don't spend more money than you make. So you, you made five grand, you spent 5,500. How do you know that if you don't track it? There's another proverb that if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Uh, so, you know, track your expenses, track your income, track your budget, do all that kind of stuff. If you don't track, you're going to bounce checks, you, which is going to cost you even more money. You know, all this other bad stuff is going to happen. So a bad habit to break is to not track your expenses. You know, I talked about um, learning and patience and giving, and I think the opposite of that is scarcity. If you have a scarcity mindset, in other words, I have a very abundant mindset. I launched Become Debt Free, but that doesn't mean you can't buy another author's book. There's plenty of room out there for you to buy my book or get my book for free at this point and buy another author's book. Just because you, you're buying the other author's book doesn't mean you don't have uh, the money, the time, the ability to get my stuff as well. So this is not a pie I'm talking about. This is abundance that I'm talking about. Stop thinking in terms of scarcity. Stop thinking in terms of competitors and instead start thinking of collaborators. Now that I've launched the book, one of the things I'm going to do is talk to some of the other podcasters and some of the other attorneys in my space to see if we can uh, maybe swap podcast interviews or something to each promote the other. Because if I bring on another podcaster that, that talks about bankruptcy and budgeting and mindset and eliminating, well, we both get exposure to each other's audience. There is no such thing as scarcity. If you believe in scarcity, if you believe in a scarcity mindset, I think that's a bad habit that you should break. The last bad habit I have here is the exact opposite of give, which is take. And basically what I said about giving. So if you're going to uh, give something, don't have an expectation that you need to get something in return. And certainly don't take anything without giving something or leaving something in return. If all you do is take, people are gonna know that, people are gonna recognize that, and your circle's gonna get much smaller, much quicker. Your, uh, your, your, your pie <laughs> that we talked about in terms of scarcity is gonna get much, much smaller. So don't take, or if you do take, plan on giving more than what you take. Be someone that creates, be someone that creates content, be someone that creates good, that creates positivity. These are all uh, good habits and bad habits to break. So to summarize, good habits, avoid spending money you don't have, avoid spending money unnecessarily, 
uh, comparison shop, no impulse buys, never pay full price, dream big, find opportunities, surround yourself with positive people, learn, have patience, give. Bad habits, spend more than you make, spend on things you don't need, buy on impulse, pay full price, complain about obstacles, play on social media, don't track, scarcity mindset, take more than you give. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, uh, please drop me a comment. Let me know what are some good habits you think you should have around your money. What are some bad habits that people have around money that you would love for them to break? Uh, I would love if you would support the new uh, uh, book, uh, Become Debt Free in Less Than One Hour. Again, you can find it at www.seanmyesner.com slash become debt free. I'll also drop a link in the various places that will let me drop a link. The book has officially launched. I'm super, super excited. I want to go back to look at my numbers and see who's done what and where and how. Uh, but for now, that's all for this video. Uh, I will start up again on Monday with another live, uh, and I'll end up posting those again to Instagram and, and YouTube and other social media channels. And uh, it looks like next week, I, I will be talking about debt settlement next week. So this week was all about mindset. Next week's all going to be about debt settlement. Uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your listening. I appreciate your positive mindset. I hope that at the end of the month, you have more money rather than at the end of the money, you have more month. And thanks again.